then you can hear us. Can you perhaps do it for me? Great. Uh, the little angels in the background have done it for me. So now, finally, that everything is ready. Uh, hi, James. How are you doing? Good morning. Hello. Uh, well, thank you for your talk. And sorry for the little hiccup at the middle. We had to uh, uh, pull out a fire with the audio going out in the middle. And sorry about this. Um, it's no trouble. So, James, um, you've obviously told us about your very fancy setup with the green screen. And I'm sad to see that you haven't put out the green screen for your <laughs> BBB session right now. Do you have it in the background just for you? <laughs> right, OK. It wasn't that far. Great. Nope. Uh, uh, so I'm just going to ask, so this is the first live uh, Q&A that we have for the session. So things might be coming into place. So pardon us if we take a little bit of time to put the uh, questions on the screen and all of this. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to load up the pad. I would invite uh, James to uh, also open the pad on his hand. Sorry, uh, I've got people talking in my ears, and it's been a while since I've last had this. And OK, so opening the talks right now, opening the pad if I can find it. Do, do, do. Me. Open as the pad. OK. So uh, have you got a pad open on your end, James? So that I can read the I question. So OK, great. Opening it on my end as well. Uh, what I'm going to do, folks, I see some of you have joined us on, uh, if I show you, some of the people have joined us in the BBB room. Uh, you can join us as well. All the links are on the talk page or on ISE. You can find it very easily. But what I'm going to start uh, doing is first taking questions in the other pad because it's a little faster to ask questions like this. And then, as soon as we've finished, feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions. All right. So. We've got some reactions about OBS being cool. And yes, uh, both James and I will be able to tell you that it's very cool. We do very fancy stuff, like uh, when I need to talk to production in the background and all the stuff, obviously, that James has been able to show you with a green screen. Um, so I don't see a whole lot of questions so far. I see a lot of reactions uh, on publishing Lecture's book. And a classic example is John Kitchens, obviously. Uh, pedagogy first developments. Hmm, macros are a cool ID. I use course for presentation. OK, questions. So how do you overlap yourself with a presentation? It's so cool. It's quite simple. Um, uh, OBS uh, provides filters um, for every, you can have a separate filter for each video feed. And one of the filters that's available is chroma key. You just choose a color to make transparent and uh, just make sure that uh, the webcam is at the top of the composition. And uh, the thing that surprised me the most was how quickly um, my brain was able to mirror everything and control my body from a separate point of view, uh, like the way uh, weather broadcasts are done. Uh, it, it took seconds to be able to do that. Uh, well, and now I have years of practice because that setup that you saw that I used to record this video, um, I used for years uh, during the pandemic for four or five semesters to, um, because my, my courses are all have two, three, 400 students, except for the English class, which has, you know, 30 students. And so during the pandemic, and even after uh, lockdowns were no longer mandated, I taught online just because I didn't want to have so many students in the room at the same time. So I've, yeah, I'm. Uh, it, I have a lot of practice doing that. But it pays off because it looks so natural. You know, it feels like it's the same thing with weather casters. You know, it, it sounds very, it looks very easy to do, but it also takes quite a bit of practice. Uh, one of the things that you also need to remember if you're using a chroma key that James has explained is that you need to have very good lighting, basically for the color to pop out in the background and for your body to be easily highlightable. OK, uh, were you finished with this question? Yeah, let's, uh, let's take another one. Sure. So how do you deal with video in Beam? I found it so hard to do that. PPT, on the other end, is easier to achieve. Yeah, so um, uh, remember that the slides um, get produced um, from org mode as, um, as PDFs. Well, and in fact, I. Even before, when I was using uh, other software to produce slides, I produced them as PDFs, precisely because I wanted to be able to mark them up on 
on the screen with the stylus. Um, and so uh, I don't do video in the slides. I use OBS to switch from static slides that I mark up with the stylus over to some kind of uh, video viewer um, and then back. And again, that's how I can use Firefox. I use OBS to switch between Firefox and video and uh, the Shornal plus plus program where I can mark up slides. So th those functionalities are, are that's why I use different software and uh, pull it all together with OBS so that I can have um, lots of functional flexibility. Great. Uh, do you ever use things like org present and stay for the PowerPoint slides? I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to read this particular question, but at least we can focus on org present. Are you familiar with what it is? I have um, I've played around with org present, and uh, again, um, I, I I guess you could use org present to show images and to show um, headings as slides, but again because i'm uh it's such a crucial functionality to be able to uh mark them up with a uh, stylus um i didn't really show this very much but i also highlight things the way i would highlight uh using a laser pointer on the screen and uh again um i i don't i don't see emacs being able to do that for another couple of uh generations <laughs> so um Really, the only thing I use Emacs for during presentations is to uh, narrow um, narrow headings so that we can focus on particular text excerpts. Right, yeah. Uh, a lot of our uh, presentation at Emacs Conf are usually, especially the org mode ones, are done with org present. And and sorry, I had some, again someone talk to me in a year. I'll get you know the problem with your MaxCon is that every year you know you have to relearn a lot of skills, and by the time we finished by Sunday evening, we are masters of it, and then we forget everything by the time the next year comes around. Uh, what I was going to say is that all present is often used by people uh, inside Emacs can't presenting about org mode. But yeah, whenever you need to do something a little more visual, it gets a little more complicated. Some people have tried to do fancy stuff with SVG, which is probably the path forward for this type of stuff. But yeah, if you need to draw, if you need to highlight, it is pretty complicated. Perhaps something that you might want to be interested, James, in checking out is uh, PDF tools, which is a way to open up a PDF uh, in uh, in, uh, in Emacs, and this allows you to have basic PDF annotations, like putting a little bit of a Nikon on it. Um, perhaps you've already played with it. Um, I, I have used that. I, uh, PDF Tools is uh, an incredible package, but um, un until it allows me to uh, make a mark on the screen that shows up uh, in a video compositor, it's um, it's not going to replace Shornal. Definitely. All right, moving on to the next question. Is the triple accolade syntax an org mode core feature that I missed so far, or did you program that? And thank you for the great talk. Uh, thank you very much. Um, no, it's just part of um, the all of the um, export backends. Actually, I think the way it works is it precedes all of the export backends. When you export, um, the first thing that happens is uh, expansion of macros. And that's that's a that's a built-in org mode feature. It's definitely beyond my Emacs Lisp powers to be able to have made something that powerful. For now, for now. <laughs> that's right. I have come a long way. <laughs> you know, we always, you know, most of the people who show up to Emacs, especially talking about stuff that has to do with presentations or what they do in academia, you know, they always say, "Oh, but you know." I couldn't have done all this, you know, it's just uh, far away. And then they come back one year or two years later, and then, oh, I've made my entire library for presentation and stuff like this. So uh, be hopeful about what the future holds for you in terms of coming up with crazy new features for the entire ecosystem. Well, let me tell you, um, it, since the pandemic, uh, I have written, uh, I wrote my first major mode. It's trivial, but it provides functionality that uh, is very useful to me. And it's, um, 
uh, it's going to sound like I'm just trying to butter everyone up, but seeing uh, a lot of the names in the IRC channel, people who have taught me so much on their uh, on their YouTube channels and and in their blog posts and on Reddit and on Mastodon, um, without many of the people who are here today uh, watching my talk, it's very fun to have uh, people who have helped me learn so much about Emacs. So thanks to all of you. Well, and yeah, and now you're becoming part of this crew of people inspiring others to do the, the, very much the same. So thank you for joining the crew. <laughs> thank uh, you very much. Um, right. Uh, moving on to the two last questions, and then we'll open up the mic to other people on Big Blue Button. Um, what kind of comparative feedback are students giving you regarding your approach? Oh, my gosh. Uh, students were ready to, uh, during the pandemic especially, um, when most uh, of the courses were just being taught oh, over Zoom by people sharing their screens. Give me just a second. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Very rude interruption. But I've got the intro for the next talk playing, and I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, give me just a second. Uh, okay. Sasha. Uh, okay. So yeah, I think it's started. Sure. One. Uh, I got the times wrong apparently because of the little delay we had uh, getting the uh, audio fixed up. Uh, the good news is that we're still recording the talk right now, and we still have James around. Uh, obviously, James, you're no longer on uh, being broadcast on general. But uh, if you want to keep answering questions, or if you want to, anyone in the room right now wants to ask you questions, feel free to do so. Uh, I'm going to need to hop off because I need to get other things ready for the next talks, sadly. But it's, James, it's no trouble. Roger. Thank you so much. Right. And so, sorry, I'm a little tense, obviously, because <laughs> I was not expecting this to happen. And that led to a very abrupt end to this discussion. But people afterwards on maximal-org slash 2023 slash talks will be able to find uh, all the content here. So I'll have to leave now. Uh, thank you so much, James, for doing the difficult task of opening up EmacsCons. And I'll probably see you later. Thank you, Leo. Bye-bye. On your the the X journal the journal program. Yes. You were you you were using the tablet as a monitor, right? Touchscreen monitor with that. That's exactly right. So it's a tablet. So you know I can it has a touch screen, and so um, the basically the functionality that that program provides is to be able to. Um, uh, just mark up PDFs with a stylus, uh, you know, in the way that you would use any other tablet, and um, to be able to take uh, to take that video signal and put it into another machine. That was the that was the key. That's the killer app. I've thought about grabbing one for the purpose of like changing my laptop into a tablet to read manga, browse the web, and kind of curious if it works well like as a wireless monitor with a tablet or um or how well it like so, you can use emacs with it in a tablet mode or were you just or are you just using well, so the, the, the tablet that i use is um this is it it's just a microsoft surface and so it comes with a keyboard so you can take the keyboard off um, yeah. but I use it, I use it with the keyboard as well. Um, and I, I just, you're cutting off right now. Audio. Your audio is cutting off right now.
How about now? <laughs> now I can hear you. Yeah, I bumped the mute button on the mic. <laughs> yeah, so again, this is... I have to figure out is... which of the 16 mute buttons you use. <laughs> it's just the Surface Pro 3 that I got used. And it runs uh, Emacs. Uh, I mean, it runs um, GNU Linux really well. And um, the the trouble is that uh, the the hard drive, you know, the SSD drive is small and the RAM is small, uh, but it it works for the purposes. Basically, um, you know, if I had a couple thousand dollars, um, I could probably buy a touchscreen machine where I could run all of I could run everything on it and do the streaming and do the uh, video capture and do the um, you know the PDF markup. But mm -hmm. since both of these are so, uh, the hardware that I use is so old and cheap and weak, I have to split it across two machines. There's also a beauty in making the stuff, having specific purposes for specific things where it's just not the, uh... yeah, it's like, I don't want a smart TV that plays Netflix. I want a smart t right. TV that has all the smart stuff. I turn my smart TV into a mon TV monitor. I don't want to. Yeah, I same here. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I, I totally uh, feel that ethic. Oh, on the some other things like if you want you to do highlighting in an org mode document, you can use org web tools. I wrote this in the notes, but you can use org web tools to download a web page. And then mm -hmm. you can use org remark to start highlighting in the org mode web page. And then if, because it's an org mode document now, you can just edit it directly. Right. Um, if you have, if you want other people to join in on an Emacs session, you could use a package like what's it called? CRDT.EL. That will allow okay. two people with two different Emacs configurations to edit the same buffer. What? And you you have a host that edit that can host a buffer too. It works Interesting. with, and they have one optional extension for org mode that will synchronize uh, the folding of the org drawers. Interesting. I will look into that. Uh, if you, like having, I don't like if you want students like you have. H highlight line mode. These are just some ideas. It's like you can have like highlight line mode so people can easily see which line you're on, cursor tracking. And then you can have other people join in, uh, students or, yeah. That's just a possible idea. Is there anyone else in the, in the um, big blue button room who uh, has a question? All right, I'm going to go over to the pad and see if there are any pending questions I can address. Thanks, Plasma Strike. Yep. Going to be tangled into source code or woven into a documentation file, which could be PDF, could be Markdown, could be uh, open office, um, uh, could be a notebook format. This methodology was conceived by Donald Knuth in 1984, and it is therefore the so, The main purpose of liquid programming is not only to make code or documentation or output more manageable, but to allow humans to create a data store Piece from a single source. So you see on the slide on the left hand side is the story and code inside a org mode file. Um, the file starts with some documentation, then on the right background is the code, and at the bottom uh, you see an output file which uh, is not shown here in the slide itself. In the middle you have the source code which is 
result of uh, tangling or of uh, opening the buffer inside uh, inside Osmo. And on the very right hand side, we have a um, um, PDF, actually, this HTML render of the very same uh, file that you've seen on the very left. So the humans look at some of this, this code and the machines will look at other parts. I actually did all my programming in the very even in the early 1990s, not using alt mode, which didn't exist yet, but using Norman Ramsey's NoVap preprocessor. And I still use it inside the alt mode today. This preprocessor, NoVap, allows you to tangle code from within an alt mode file as a self standing file, much like alt mode's edit functions, which export code blocks into buffers in whatever language the code. In data science, these interactive notebooks, um, in one of the interpreted languages like Julia, Python, or R, dominate. The basic technology, basis technology is that of Jupyter notebooks, which take their name from Julia, Python, and R. And these notebooks use a spruced up shell, for example, IPython from Python, with an option to add SQL cells. All mode inside Emacs has a large number of advantages. Some of them are listed here over these notebooks. Two of these stand out particularly. Different languages can be mixed, as uh, shown in the image. While in Jupyter notebooks, a notebook is limited to running a kernel in one language only. The content of the notebook, its document, code, or output part can be exported in a variety of currently the only person in this conference. To, share with others and to use one's work in different reports.